All right, so today's video is all about marginal gains. It's almost coming up to race season for most people. Some people has even started. And I think it's important to think that realistically, you've probably got as fit as you can. How can you get a small couple gains uh, without spending too much money? Now, I've got a list here of things that I'm going to go through. Some good, some of them probably not as good. And it also depends what sort of gains you need. So first of all, we're going to talk about latex in the tubes. They're a pretty obvious gain to most people. Unless you're running tubeless, like you're going to have probably huge iron tubes on your, on your bike. They're pretty slow. They're pretty heavy. People approximate about 50 grams per inner tube you can save in terms of weight. So that's pretty significant if you're doing hill climbs, but road racing or time trials probably not that significant. But the big thing is rolling resistance. People say about three to four watts increase or oh, sorry, decrease in rolling resistance. And that's per wheel, obviously. So all in all, maybe it could be six to eight watts. Quite a lot of saving cost wise. Probably it's gone up a lot. Inner tubes used to be 750 for latex. Now it's like 13, 15. So it's, it's a pretty significant outlay. However, I think bang for buck, pretty good. Uh, if I had wheels that were tubeless, I, I just keep it like that. That's the quickest you can go. But if not, definitely would go and upgrade to latex inner tubes. Uh, next up is wax chains. Now wax chains, I think can have a bad rep and I actually think they're really good. Uh, for multiple reasons. So I think the general riding, they're pretty good because it keeps your bike really clean. So that saves you money uh, because basically your components don't wear out as quickly. Uh, but I think we're going to purely talk about race day. I think they're some of the best gains you can get really because it scales with power, similar to inner tubes to be fair, but it's about one to one and a half percent savings on the drivetrain. Um, so on your overall power, um, which is pretty decent, like um, compared to sort of a, a traditional oil based lube. So for a wax chain, you're probably looking at like maybe 20 quid more. So I sell wax chains below. So if you want to pick one up, pretty cheap price. Durace is 60, Ultegra is um, 50. The difference between them is about 0.3 watts. But wax chain is going to save you quite a lot of watts. It also looks sick. It's got PTFE on it, as well as the fact that realistically, um, it keeps dry drivetrain so clean. I just 10 out of 10 would recommend one, especially if you're time trialing. I think road racing is more fast, but if you're time trialing, it's just a must have because you just go so much quicker and just so much less fat with all the oil and degrees and all the rest of it. Um, next up, I think, which applies for both road racing and time trials is overshoes. I don't really see why people don't wear them. Okay, maybe on a road race you look stupid, but like at the same time, people say 45k an hour, it's like eight watts. It sort of depends. Those people are often trying to sell you overshoes. So how much you take their, their watt saving, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, uh, realistically, it is a good saving. And I think in road race, unless it's really hot, I would definitely wear overshoes. I think aero socks, I, I don't have much faith that they really do much, mainly because your legs are moving around a lot. I just can't see how they like are going to trip the air in the way they say. But I think overshoes, I mean, you've got massive for me, like boa dials on them. It obviously makes sense that overshoes are going to going to save some watts. Next up is a skin suit, which obviously for, for TT boys, pretty, you know, it's pretty sensible. Most people are going to be wearing a skin suit. Again, 20 watts or 45 can hours, what Nopin's quote. I mean, how much it is, it sort of depends how loose fitting your clothing It could be way more. Um, but I think for road racing, I think again, I mentioned this before and I'll mention it again, is so good, especially if you're an amateur and let's say your longest road race, well, in the UK at least, is maybe four hours. But if you're doing like the top level, but most like UK road race is around three hours. Well, you don't need that much food for three hours. Like realistically, you can get one of these porter gels, which Adam Hans has, which is about this big, well, this big, sorry, goes down the back of your neck. And you can have it there. And realistically, like it just is going to be a lot more aero than a road race. And then you just take it out from the back, have a little swig, put it back one bottle in your, on your bike. You could have mix as well, like with that sugar in it. Um, and another one, just water, really easy way of getting food down, but also super, super idle. So very important. The last one is basically about saving weight. And I think this is potentially not that useful for time trial people. Obviously road race people, I think it can be good. Um, but things like I had the ideas on, so quick release skewers, get calm, uh, like t titanium quick release skewers, probably 40 or 50 grams there. You get a top cap. You might say that's stupid, but it's like you save 10 grams and it costs you like five pounds. So on a hill climb build, it would be rude not to. You've got expander plugs as well, a little bit more dodgy, but again, probably 20, 30 grams saving there. Um, seat post, if you've got a normal seat post, so it's in a 27.2 mil one, you can probably save 40, 50 grams and get 130 gram. Seat post from AliExpress for about 20 pounds. You can get pedals, uh, you get time espresso pedals from AliExpress. Again, those are super, super light, um, and don't weigh too much. You have to change your pedal system. Okay. I understand that. But if you're really chasing every marginal gain, that's pretty obvious. 
Brakes again, you can go super uh, like lightweight hill climb brakes. I like can get EE brakes now for like 150 quid from AliExpress. Again, are they real? No one knows. Uh, but or if, even if you don't want to do AliExpress brakes, let's say you've got Shimano Durace brakes, you just change to SRAM red brakes. They're way lighter. SRAM brakes are like 50, 60 grams lighter. Um, and then, you know, if you're doing a latex in the tube as well, it all adds up. And I think ultimately for a road race, I wouldn't really say it's a huge thing. Like, you know, having a bike that's 200 grams lighter is nice. It's not the biggest thing in the world. Um, but I would say for hill climbs, obviously it's, uh, it's a given that you should try and get your bike as light as possible. So anyway, those are my thoughts about what you should, where you should spend your money on marginal gains. These are all sort of good gains. I think the lightweight things are always harder to justify, but I think wax chains, aero things like overshoes, skin suits, um, and latex in the shoes is sort of a no brainer. So anyway, leave me your, leave me your comment below about what you think is the best marginal game. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. The audio is